This is not a detailed how to set up your lighter ram and get going. If you want to do that, contact me offline. I just want to give you some idea of what the process is, what it can do, and some of the things. Uh, we have 1,100 lights up here, 16 channels. Um, we have a hardware, Lightorama has a hardware utility, and that's the first step. Uh, actually, I'm going to tell you about these. They've got the hardware utility, which you need to kind of, so the computer can find everything and you can get hooked up to it. Uh, they have the source editor, we'll use that, the sequence editor, where you actually program it, and think of it like a giant spreadsheet. It's not very often. What did you do? Uh, they have its own calendar. It has its own scheduling system. I plug it in, get it going, and I go away. And at 6 o'clock at night, it turns on. It plays till 11 o'clock at night, and then it turns off. Uh, works like a champ. Disconnect your computer from the internet, and turn off uh, Microsoft updates, because if it decides to do an update and reboot, sometimes it, you come home and your lights aren't on when you come home from work and it's not a good feeling. Hardware utility, the first step is you have to, uh, over here you, it tells me where my units are, what I'm looking for. This is looking for the controllers, and this is where it looks for the port where you put onto. You can get a USB connection, a serial port, there's all sorts of different things. This is how it finds it. And then you do a refresh here and it goes and finds your control units. I don't know if you can see it, but here it says I've got one control unit that's unit number five. And the commercial grade ones actually have switches in there you can set to zero five. So I know this box will always be zero five unless I take the hardware utility and change it. But that only lasts until I unplug it and plug it back in. The Planet Christmas ones, the, the smaller plastic ones, each one of those has to be hooked up individually. And you have to tell it, you are unit five, you are unit six, you are unit seven, whatever units they are. Part, that's part of the reason I started with this, but now that I'm a little more comfortable with it, I'll probably, if I buy more, I will buy the cheaper plastic ones to save myself money. Because like I say, they start to add up. When you do uh, Lightorama, get the sequence editor. You have two kinds of sequences. Uh, you can do an animated sequence or a musical sequence. We're going to start off with the new animated sequence. You get a screen that comes up and you can put your name in. You can tell it how many units you want to add. But if he always puts it in his console one, so I'm going to tell him have one, one channel, I'm sorry, channels, not units. Uh, I'm going to tell it just one because I want to add my unit 15 because he's going to add unit one. I just I don't want to have to go through the whole process to leave and this is just going to create a, a grid, basically. Um, I like to have 10 ticks per second. Uh, you think about cartoon animation, it's typically 12 frames per second or 24 frames per second. You pretty much need at least 10, set 10 interruptions per second to be able to get your sequencing in line with the music. A tenth of a second sounds like a lot, but there's some that I even go more. It's, it's weird. Uh, if you play with it, you'll find you do more. And what I need to do here is I'm going to insert device. I'm going to insert a device above this. And I'm going to tell it this is unit ID 5. And it's a regular controller. And he knows it's a 16 bit or a 16 channel controller. And he magically puts in my 16 channels. Um, and let's say I want to take all my likes. And from here, for the first two seconds, just take two seconds. And have them fade up. And there's, there are shortcut keys that you can learn to use. And I'm going to try not to use those because I don't want to confuse the issue. Um, one thing you see here, you can see the grades going from no light to fully on. To me, that's hard to see. You can click up on here and say, I want to show my fades as ramps. So you can see that the lights are ramping on. For me, that's easier to see. So I can now run this sequence and my lights well, come on. And that's over two seconds. They went from zero to four. And I'm going to do play. Play range is only the visible screen. So I'm only going to only play for as long as we're looking. So I can take those lights and slowly fade them on. Now, if I want to do more, I can say, okay, let's, let's go over the next three seconds and fade them back off. And you can do a fade down. Speed will play, and they'll fade up, and fade in. And they have a nice even fade. 
These are full wave LEDs. These are not the cheap ones you buy at Home Depot. These are actually brought from LED holiday lighting. The incandescent lights work really well. If you get into this and want to play with LEDs, talk to me. Uh, I'm learning more and more about it every day. Uh, I found a new guy that knows there's a lot to learn about LEDs. Okay, so you can do fade up, fade down. And it has another thing that you can do is like, okay, let's do a chase sequence. Let's uh, put in, we'll do a fade up on here. Fade up, and then we'll be on for a, few, for a half a second. And we'll fade down. And we can copy that. Being a typical computer guy, I am way in if you why type it again if you don't have to. So I don't think this play range the Okay, so this is just one sequence where okay, play from sequence. Play range. From selection, sorry. So you can run like a chase scene. And I've done that pretty slow just to make it pretty blatant. You can see what, what's going on. So then it's got, uh, of course, you can turn it on or off if you want. And it's got the ability to do uh, something called shimmer and something called twinkle. Um, not sure, I've never used either of these, but a lot of people do. Not sure why. But you can shimmer or twinkle. So you don't have to, I mean, you can see how quick and easy that goes. So uh, let's do the play range, uh, the full sequence, and they'll just start from the beginning and say, okay, we'll turn them on, we'll fade them down, we'll chase them once. So now if you have an animated thing that you don't want a sequence to music, this is just just program. Kind of like a prop one. You know, do this, do that, do this, do that. Uh, it's 110 volt things get switched like was good. So let's get rid of this guy and we'll now do a new. Now we're going to do an, uh, an animation sequence. Oh no, musical sequence. This is where it gets, uh, this is where you, I do most of my stuff. Uh, you need an audio file. It can do uh, waves or MP3. What I do, most of mine, I put a CD into my, my PC, ripped it down, save that file, and I off and go. If you use this and you download your music from Amazon or iTunes, those songs come down in um, variable bitrate. And what they do is they compress the music and they so it's, it's a variable thing, it compresses, it makes an actual audio file smaller. You can use Audacity, load it into Audacity, and you can save it as a fixed bit rate. I forget the exact term. But then it's very fixed and very rigid. So if you've got like dead spaces or notes that hold for a long time, they actually take the same amount of space. If you can sequence it, it works fine. The problem is while you're sequencing it, it doesn't flow right. And you'll kind of get a feel what I mean about this. Um, the worst song I ever have sequenced was uh, Josh. Uh, John Schmidt, he's a local piano guy, um, and he's incredibly, you know, he does a song called I Saw Three Ships. Very neat Christmas song. I thought, man, that's great. It's got a real nice beat and very sharp notes, and it'll be easy to do. Um, I put 24 hours into his three minute song on my uh, 80 channels. It was brutal. It was just absolutely brutal. Listening to the same piece of music one or two seconds at a time. 12 times, you get it down, then you move on to the next set. It is brutal. And part of it is, I am OCD. I, I have to get every note, every beat, and it has to be exact. Uh, there are people who do sweeps, like you'll just sweep through the music instead of, like you get a piano key run. I'll make each light turn on with the key. Some people will just take the run. And it's my problem. I know it. I have CDO. You put those letters in order the way they should be. Uh, so that's just the way I do this. Okay, so we're going to do a new musical sequence. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I want to go to my desktop and I want to go to my. Okay. I took a song. Uh, it's part of the Nightmare Before Christmas. I did that because Harold insists that everything has to be Nightmare Before Christmas. Uh, I cut off some of it. I just have a piece of it to show kind of what we can do with it. Uh, 
And you can go in and load in all this nice information about it and stuff, and I read that. Uh, and you can tell it to, once you've saved your configuration, once you build a configuration for what your yard looks like, you can save it and then just load it in again so you don't have to recreate it.